On the 24th of July, 1976, a convention held by the American Legion at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel in Philadelphia came to an end. Three days later, all over the state, veterans who had attended the convention started dying. All of them experienced the same symptoms. Many of them ultimately had the same fate. It would take months of patient and painstaking investigation before doctors would finally be able to identify the cause of this deadly epidemic. The American Legion was founded in 1919 and has grown steadily since. The organization, which consists of and is managed by veterans of the US Armed Forces, lobbies on behalf of veterans and provides support and community for them. It holds an annual convention as well as many smaller regional gatherings, and has done so for many years. The 1976 Pennsylvania Convention was like many that had come before it. Around 2,000 veterans from all over the state converged on the Bellevue Stratford Hotel in Philadelphia, an iconic hotel and convention center that had been used as a venue by the American Legion many times before. It was an opportunity to meet and catch up with old friends, to discuss the business of the Legion, to hear speeches and presentations on its activities, and to drink and dine in the company of other Legionnaires. When the convention came to an end on the 24th of July, many veterans returned home feeling happy but tired. Some of them were unusually tired. Over the next few days, many attendees started to feel feverish and suffered from chills, aches and pains, and persistent coughs. The first Legionnaire to die with this strange set of symptoms was 61-year-old retired Air Force Captain Ray Brennan, a man who also worked as a bookkeeper for the Legion. His death was initially attributed to a heart attack, with doctors only becoming suspicious when it was followed by several more similar deaths, all of them veterans who had been at the convention. As time went on, more and more veterans fell ill. Over the course of just a single month, 149 legionnaires became ill, and 25 passed away. While some deaths were initially wrongly attributed to heart attacks, it soon emerged that the actual cause of death in each case was a respiratory infection, one which resembled a severe form of pneumonia. Doctors all over the state, alarmed by the sudden outbreak of a mystery disease among their patients, alerted the Center for Disease Control, and the Pennsylvania Health Department, who pooled their resources to try and find out what was going on. For several months, however, the exact cause of the disease remained unknown. The hotel quickly became a focus for the investigation. It was the one common factor. Everyone who had been taken ill had been at the hotel. Even several people who hadn't been attending the convention had been affected, including a handful of pedestrians who had merely walked past the property. Several staff were also affected, including the building's air conditioning engineer. All signs pointed to the Bellevue Stratford, and so the investigation was focused there. At this time, the task force assembled by the CDC simply didn't know what they were looking for. Was this mystery disease caused by a toxin somewhere in the building, or was it an illness that had been passed from person to person during the convention? They were dealing with something completely unknown, and so were forced to follow up every possible lead, no matter how unlikely. Some speculated that the cause of the illness could be cadmium poisoning, spread through the metal pitchers which were used to serve drinks at the convention. These pitchers were seized and tested, and this possibility was eliminated. Others suggested that a resident of the hotel might have smuggled in a secret pet. Parakeets were known to carry a disease that caused the pneumonia-like symptoms that the veterans were experiencing. The hotel was searched from top to bottom. No parakeets were found. Throughout the building, the carpets were tested, the walls swabbed. Every possible vector for disease was considered. Had the microphone used by speakers been contaminated? Had it spread via the buttons inside elevators, through a piece of equipment in the kitchens, through the hotel's laundry service, or via an infected member of staff? Was it one of the legionnaires who had brought the mysterious disease into the hotel from somewhere else in the state? The possibilities were endless. With so many leads to chase up, the investigation went on for months, and to make matters worse, there was relentless media coverage of its progress. 
The nation had been on high alert for an epidemic in the weeks and months leading up to the convention, with experts worried that a new strain of swine flu would soon be causing havoc across the country. In this atmosphere of fear and tension, it's no wonder that everyone was keen to discover the cause behind the mystery illness. In the absence of any progress towards a definitive answer, though, many began speculating. It was proposed that the disease was the result of everything from a terrorist attack to an alien invasion to a series of chronically malfunctioning photocopiers. Of course, none of these wild ideas turned out to be correct. Months passed, and despite much speculation in the papers, the CDC task force was none the wiser. By this stage, the investigation had dragged on so long that CDC disease specialist Dr. Joseph McDade was openly lambasted at a Christmas party by one of his superiors for not having made any progress in the search for a cause. Stung by this public criticism, Dr. McDade returned to his lab as soon as possible and set to work injecting lung tissue samples from stricken veterans into guinea pigs. After a few weeks of intensive work, he noticed something a new and unknown bacteria present in the livers of these guinea pigs. It would require a great deal more testing before he realised that he had finally laid eyes on the cause of the epidemic. This bacteria, previously undiscovered, would eventually come to be known as Legionella pneumophila. Once it had been discovered, naming the bacteria and the disease it caused was an easy job. With no idea what was causing so much death and illness amongst members of the American Legion, investigators had already started referring to it as Legionnaire's disease. The name stuck. With the cause of the disease now positively identified, the CDC were able to further their investigations. They traced the bacteria to the cooling tower of the hotel's air conditioning system, where the disease was breeding freely in standing water which had collected there. This was how it had been spread during the convention. Over a few hot days in July, the aircon system had sprayed a deadly load of bacteria into many areas in and around the hotel. The discovery of Legionella solved the mystery not just of what had happened at the 1976 American Legion convention, but also what had been behind several other smaller mystery illness outbreaks, which had taken place in previous years. Investigators were able to look back through recent history and note several incidents of mass illness attributable to the bacteria including at least one other at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel. To combat this newly recognised danger, new regulations were introduced governing the maintenance of air conditioning systems, with these standards quickly spreading worldwide. At the same time, doctors set to work researching treatments for the newly identified disease. Now, many years later, Legionnaire's disease is still a danger that we face. Several outbreaks happen each year in the US alone, spreading via air conditioning units, swimming pools, spas or other places where large bodies of water are found. Fortunately, we have a much better understanding of the bacteria than we did in 1976, along with an arsenal of means for controlling it. Systems which are susceptible to Legionella are now routinely monitored and include elements for treating water to destroy the bacteria. Additionally, when an outbreak does occur, diagnosis is generally swift, and the infection can in many cases be treated with a course of antibiotics. Through painstaking research and learning, we have turned what was once a terrifying mystery disease into something much less deadly. Now it is merely something that, while it does still have an impact, can be kept in check with diligent care and close attention. Never again will this disease cause the kind of fear and speculation that it did back in 1976.